Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mauve Coaching Podcast. This is episode six and today we have Orla, aka the Health Hun. Hi! And obviously as you know on the pod we talk all things health and fitness, emotional and mental well-being, traveling, career chats and everything in between and that's something we're going to be chatting about today. First things first, we're going to chat maybe about your Bali journey. Okay. Because I was actually just saying to Orla before, like I feel... Like, despite being, like, besties and spending so much time together, there's so much we gloss over about all of our, like, past. We just expect everyone to kind of, like, know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to learn a lot about Orla's, I guess, journey to where she is today and what you do. Walk me through, like, what got you to where you are today? Like, what, what is your journey career-wise and body-wise? I am a nutritionist slash health coach and I specialise in three areas. So relationship with food and body is one, gut health and IBS is another, PCOS and hormones is another as well. Yes. Um, and yeah, I have been living in Bali for the last 13 months now. I left in between, did a little bit of travelling in Europe. Um, but Bali has always been the dream for me. Yeah. As has been, um, when I say always actually, Having my own business and living in Bali hasn't always been the dream. It has been the dream since, I'd say, two years before I did it. But before that, I was, like, figuring out what the fuck I was doing with my life. Like any other mm-hmm. young person. Like, we're so... We've got so much pressure and expectations to have everything figured out. Um, I went to college and I did science. So I have a science degree, which took me five years to get instead of the four. Because <laughs> I failed. Ah, uh, sure year. look. Another full <laughs> year of studying education. It's grand. Honestly, it was the year I needed. It's so funny that, like, back then, I always had the fear got of me being like, oh, my God, I failed. Yeah. I have an extra year. My CV employees are going to be like... or employees are going to be like what what's all this about I'm gonna have to explain it it's gonna be embarrassing I'm not gonna be able to get jobs no one gives a fuck no one gives a fuck about what um what's the thing called your grade is it like your end of year grade two on the first yeah kind of shit your grade whatever um was always the thing that's kind of like drilled into your brains about trying to strive and trying to get better and honestly the minute I had interviews for college placement in third year they were literally like snapping me up they were delighted because I had experience working which is invaluable understanding how to think critically like be on your own two feet etc um that what that's what stood to me like getting the first or whatever um and the whole fell in first year didn't even didn't even matter at all so yeah I got my experience I worked in a hospital I worked in emergency department for four years um you definitely told me that and I just forgot yeah 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 yeah. but it's not something you think of like would you think of me in a healthcare system uniform walking around the hospital absolutely not (laughs) Like, no, but I can imagine you'd be very good at it. Yeah. Because you're a very caring it. person. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, not the world I know. No, no. Yeah. I actually used to try, I used to put scrubs on all the time. Um, <laughs> so I need to see a photo of you in scrubs. I definitely have a photo somewhere. <laughs> um, I'll get a picture. But I, I used to kind of make my own rails a little bit. You're not meant to be wearing, like, the uniform that's, like, not meant for you, obviously. Ooh, okay. um, Like a different level. Yeah, like, I'm not I'm not a doctor. I'm not, like, a very young pro. Oh, shit, whatever. yeah. Oh, I wanted to be a doctor, guys. Like, literally fully thought I was going to be a doctor after doing my science degree. I don't know if I'll be able to get a picture. But that's, like, far back. that's not atypical. Like, a lot of people think I'm going to be a lawyer, you know, or, like, a CEO of some big boss corporate place. Like, we all have this, like, very linear view it's, just it's like of success you found out along the way what you actually wanted yeah. which is part of that journey yeah and so. like even that year of you failing and repeating that actually when it comes to like employers I think they'll see that and they'll be like well this girl failed and got back up again mm-hmm. she didn't quit you know what I mean and that shows a lot of like character you to live your life you know yeah um and I think that, like I said, that college mindset is really about like trying to strive to get the highest grades, trying to strive to get, like even in my degree, being in a science course is all about trying to get a PhD then at the end of it. When like people do PhDs and they fucking hate them, <laughs> there's no money in it. There's, they, they've no like, even if they're not doing it's it for hard. money, there's no, like they lose their love for science and research because there's no support in there. They're just overworking and... Mm. You know, there's there's no, like, what we're sold is this kind of, like, shiny thing, and it's not actually going to give you, it's not going to make you feel fulfilled at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so I kind of realised that working in the hospital, that I really enjoyed working, and I really enjoyed kind of, like, being on my own initiative and kind of making mm. my own rules. Never thought that I'd be self-employed, never, ever even... 
like a sniff of having my own business was not even in my in my world yeah um so did my college course as I was working in the hospital at the same time thought I was gonna do the GAMSAT and study to be a doctor afterwards um, and then I did my placement That's in third mad. year I know I don't know how I didn't know that but in a way like what you're saying there like you thought you were going to be doing X, Y, and Z. But, like, that's the way, like, the education system is structured. It's, like, you don't ever think that, especially females think a lot of the time, we don't ever think that the entrepreneurial side of things, like going the self-employed route, is an option that's viable or legitimate. Like, I remember I used to think, like, the only way of, like, hustling was to hustle at the feet of other people. Like, it wasn't, like, for my own gain. So... I think that's what everyone in Bali realizes. That's what happened to me. Like I came here and I was like, whoa, there's a lot of entrepreneurs. And like, it's not, because when you're in Ireland, a lot of the time it's like, it's rare to meet entrepreneurs. Like there's only a few people I know personally in my network that actually took that route. Mm. And it's like, everyone always like admires them because they're like, whoa, that's so different. Yeah, yeah. Not to say that we're admirable, but like. Mm. But you know, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Kind of but um, yeah, I think that, even to have like trust in yourself and like what we're kind of conditioned to believe is all about like security and safety and you know get the permanent job and blah 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 um and so yeah I did the did my third year placement in college and then I would have worked in the pharmaceutical industry and then actually realized okay maybe I don't need to maybe I can still like enjoy what I do in the health kind of world yeah. but don't actually have to be in a public setting in an emergency department where there's fucking chaos on a regular basis um, so after finished my college degree and straight away then afterwards I started studying nutrition um, but that was not even with the goal of like being like have my own business like literally my job did not exist like obviously there's a nutritionist it's- title that exists but like being a nutritionist for women and like looking at hormones and disordered eating and gut health just wasn't a thing back then so like Mm. if we went to like careers days or anything like that that, that's it's not a thing so um I kind of had to discover it and create it myself um and even now like to try and give myself like a job title and kind of like nutritionist slash health coach don't kind of like yeah like it it kind of undersells it a little bit because yeah like I have a lot of different qualifications and I feel like I'm always learning so that that's what I've struggled with my whole life I always thought I was a generalist Mm. and I wasn't like great at any one thing I'm just kind of good at like a good few things Mm. but I was like how the fuck do I make that a job like how the fuck do I excel in a career or whatever Mm. but what I found very quickly was I was very good at whatever I put my mind to Mm. very very good at anything um not to say I'm good at everything but I'm a good learner let's say that like I'm not like naturally gifted or talented but I'm a good learner and I figure I think because I'm a scientist like I'm very much get to the why and the root of everything yeah so through my own issues through my own struggling I just kept studying and kept learning and then I'm like, okay, well, I need to share this information with everyone else. And yeah. that's just led me to where I am today. It's mad, though, like, even, like, what you're saying about how you're always learning. Like, because I was conditioned to only view, like, studying as a way to, like, you know, as I said before, sense of self-worth, essentially, being attached to that, like, oh, yeah. great. <laughs> so, like, I completely fell out of love with learning. And I remember, like, look at my friends who, like, loved to learn and they loved like, like reading papers and stuff and I just find it like really laborsome but I would do it because I knew I had to whereas now because it's doing something that I actually want to learn more about because it's obviously beneficial for my clients but also for me like as a woman like even as you, what you do like hormone health that was just not something that like I it wasn't even my realm of like no. consciousness no. for like years and had I known all the stuff that I know now and we'll continue to learn about it. Like, I just, it just annoys me that, like, I, because of the, basically I studied business, because of that and the nature of it, like, it was very, like, theoretical. And, like, I feel like I was, like, this isn't what, like, I didn't have my passion there. Mm-hmm. So now that I'm doing something that I am passionate about, then, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm actually, I want to. Like, I'm, like, I schedule in time to research just for that. I'm, I'm like I enjoy reading that like you're like so don't be annoyed I suppose that your path is like my yeah path, my path wasn't like direct to where I was like my just first frustrated job, I'd say is more so than annoyed yeah but you'll be surprised of what will stand to you like my yeah. first job out of college right was working in an e-learning role in training right and technically that's not 
your degree of the science, right, biotechnology, which could literally slot into any high paying job in the whole company. Mm. But I chose to go into the training department, which you don't technically need like a science degree for. So no one could make head or tails, but everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? You can literally do whatever you want. Why are you picking this job? I was like, do you know what? I'm actually just going to go with the flow with the six month contract, see where it takes me. And now I'm making my own my own courses, you know, yeah. so it, it stands to you. Yeah, true. Um, I did my science degree and it didn't go to waste. I use it every day with like inflammation, um, genetics, like yeah. immunology, et cetera, true. et cetera, you know. So you will be surprised at how different things you pick up along the way mm. or even not even the technical, but like the practical things that you learn working in, in, in the industry as well, yeah. that that's going to stand to you, you know, so. No, it's true. Like I. I studied business and I'm running my own business. But you'd just be surprised. Like, I was even chatting to people about this yesterday. The amount of shite they teach you. Like, it's just not shite. Like, it's just not applicable or practical in the real world. Like, and going back to my point about, like, how the education system is structured is that it won't be nurturing of an entrepreneurial spirit. So then the stuff that I was learning was more so applicable to, like, a big corp. Yeah. You know, with like multifunctional matrix teams, like all these things that like won't necessarily apply to me. But like all the stuff I learned about like communication skills, like management styles, like I guess service based relationships. So like fostering good relationships with people is really important. So yeah, I have learned a lot, but I feel like that's also not learned. That's just who I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't think you can teach that. Yeah. Like if you're a business minded person, or like a people person. I don't think you can go from not, you know what I mean? You can't. Yeah, yeah. Like so, I learn as I go. Yeah. I fully learn as I go. So speaking of businesses, we were actually having a chat the other day on the beach, midweek sunbathing, which is so unheard of for me. This is this lady's influence. She's teaching me all I'm about. An angel on her shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Or the devil, depends on the day, telling me to go out like yesterday. <laughs> um, but yeah, the two things, I guess, even just from that would be, I'd love to hear about how you, A, started your business and continued to grow it in such a unique way. Because we were chatting about this on the beach, as I said, and it was like hearing your insights about how you kind of approach it in a feminine way, as opposed to what the traditional masculine, I guess, would you say, way of like approaching, you know, hustling, yeah, running a business, like working weekends like not giving yourself like time off so the two kind of come together balance and like feminine versus masculine so could you talk me through like how you even learned about that because clearly it's working for you and I obviously want to gravitate more towards that because I mean the the alternative is very stressful (laughs) and like you don't get time to enjoy yourself along the way like we're in our 20s so teach me (laughs) so it's been a journey yeah so I'm not going to say that I started off that way and you know it's been clean smooth sailing from there like yeah like I do rec- so my approach is really about like you have to recognize in our industry that it's going to come in seasons and some of our people don't want to exercise don't really give a fuck about the nutrition um even though they can learn how to eat nutritiously and enjoy some ice cream during the summer but that's the topic yeah. for another day um <laughs> that's what you teach them yeah. um <laughs> But like, and then January to March, typically everyone kind of wants to sort their shit out. So your business is cyclical in nature. So you have to adapt and be a cyclical being with that. So that looks like sometimes making sacrifices and sometimes like really being like on, like ready to rock when when the clients are high, you know? Um, But recognizing when you need to put boundaries in place, recognizing when you need to protect your energy at the end of the day. Mm. Like I've done it. I've done periods of times where I'm back to back. I've had waiting lists. I'm squeezing calls in whenever I can. And it does a disservice to my clients as well as for me. So you're like, people can sniff it a mile off. If you're burnt off and you're burnt out and you're not giving people the value that they're paying for. Yeah. They're not gonna, like people always remember how you feel, how, how you make them feel versus like what you say. So mm. you could be telling them all the technical things, but if you're kind of half ass and showing up, they're like, they're gonna smell it off you. Yeah, <laughs> you'll see through like, it, like I yeah, would. Yeah. yeah. So my approach is, I've got different days for different things. So that allows me to be more feminine and to kind of dip into different mm. aspects. So like Monday to Tuesday, 
is more of like lighter check-in days so it's not as heavily focused on check-ins it'd be obviously a little bit of communication with my clients but I, that will give me then space to do creative things yeah. um, or maybe even space to have a little bit um, more free time on a Monday or Tuesday or to do my learning on a Monday or Tuesday as well mm. um, and then Wednesday every second week is check-ins and every other week then I've got space to kind of fit in appointments or do whatever I need to do yeah and then Thursday and Fridays I usually like you know back to back um with client check-ins and I don't book book in anything else I might do a podcast I might do a new consultation but that can also change so if I have like Mm. busy periods of the year whereas now it's kind of just kind of nice and steady but if I have really busy periods of the year I might have to pull back on the likes of doing the podcast so for the last few weeks I've been scheduling in basically two seasons back to back so I can prepare for this future but I've not always done in the future I've always done in the now which I think is I don't like things too structured and too planned Mm. that's very masculine that's not very feminine I I didn't even know about this stuff before I met Orla like I was just (laughs) I've told you guys I'm on a little bit of a journey here with myself and my healing and spirituality and shit I guess but I didn't know really much about masculine and feminine until you said to me that I'm very apparently in my masculine right Makes sense. I'm Sagittarius, so like hyper independence and all that jazz, and like mm-hmm. I love, I love structure. I feel like I need it sometimes when I'm feeling low on energy. That it kind of gives me that not drive, but yeah, drive and discipline to get up in the mornings okay, when you're you not see feeling you're it. Shift on, you know? Yeah, because then it's like otherwise, because I'm still working that like sense of self worth, being tied to productivity and like achievement. It's really like hard. To, to be, I guess, content if I'm not finding fulfillment somewhere. Like, mm. otherwise I'd just be, I'd go crazy a little bit. <laughs> so you have structure, but you have leniency built into that structure. Yeah, I, I'm not the type of person that's like, okay, quarter, start of the quarter, we're planning this and we've got a whole fucking year mapped out. Because what I found is I put mm. my pressure, put this pressure on myself to get shit done and I don't leave myself open to opportunities then because like different things can pop up along the way that I might not have... I might have been blind to or I might not have been open to. Yeah. And if I learn to adapt to those different things and not put so much pressure on a timeline. So like my course I've been working on for the last year and a half and it's going to be coming out in January. Like it's going to be coming out in January. <laughs> but I tried, stay tuned, yeah. but I tried to get that course done La- start of the summer, tried to get it done then for end of summer, September and uh, then again October and I was before Black Friday and blah 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 and I was always putting pressure on myself and it wasn't ready it wasn't fully mm. like what I wanted it to be it was rushed now what I've actually found is I'm able to incorporate my trauma course into it I'm able yeah. to incorporate meditations into it they were not mm. things that were originally planned and when I released these expectations of oh I told people I was going to create a course and I was going to have it ready like a few months ago no one gives a fuck won't be like oh she said she was launching it next year and yeah. it's been two years yeah, I know. No <laughs> one's going to be thinking all the things that like you were saying to yourself in your head. Yeah. And when you good. start to like release that, so like you're a recovering perfectionist, that was also me. Um, I would say I'm recovered to the point where I was going to say I can't imagine that no, and like, like not in a bad way it's a good thing no like serious anxiety over anything going out that wasn't perfect so like now that I'm more in my feminine but I'm I, like you said I'm balanced with the masculine I don't have like no structure I have I always have a work in Excel sheet that I will have like tabs open and kind of things planning I've got my my week generally planned because there's like set days to set things so there is an element of that structure Mm. but every morning I don't wake up and I'm like okay this is my routine gonna go this at this time I'm going with the flow (laughs) I'm going with the flow Irish people use our hands so much like when I watch back these podcasts I'm like oh my god can you put your hands down I can't glue them down no I'm not no not you me like whatever especially when I'm solo I'm like (laughs) <laughs> yeah no it's just a thing I don't know what it is and I can't put this on down right now yeah look <laughs> have you seen that um, it was a TikTok of this Italian yeah I oh, saw it yeah basically a, like an Italian husband <laughs> I guess you could say um, was being recorded by his wife and she was like you're not allowed to use her hands telling this story and he was like okay that's gonna be really hard so he like was putting his hands down like having to hold them down and he'd still just be like <laughs> but yeah going back to the thing about structure (laughs) this is what happens we get sidetracked structure and 
dedicating different things to different days. I've actually started doing that lately. It wasn't like a conscious thing, but like say on Friday, for example, I did purely creative work and like, you know, yeah, content creation. And I found that I got really into a flow of it. Whereas sometimes when I, because I like to like plan my days and my weeks, which I know I need to probably scale back on a little bit. I try to do a little bit of everything or at least I used to on each day. So like check-ins, which in themselves, because they're, you know, we want to give the best to our clients, they are very high energy. So in that sense, you do kind of come out of them feeling you need to rejuvenate that energy. So when I do check-ins with other things that day, like say content creation, I'm so like, I find like my productivity really is compromised. So yeah, like separating or segregating each day to do a certain thing, or at least like for the most part, I've actually read studies on it. Apparently, it is a real thing, yeah, productivity-wise. Yeah, like time blocking, so they like will block mm. um, their time. There's like some method where you do like 25 minutes, five minute break, 25 minutes, five minute break. Oh, but I get in the flow just as in 25 minutes. Yeah, so I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's too structured for me. Yeah, I don't oh, yeah. like having things too planned. So I will have like, say, I'll have a call in the, the afternoon or I'll have something that's a commitment later on. So that will kind of in a way structure my day. Yeah. But I think it's so much better for you to like, if you have a type of job that kind of, or, or some deep work you have to do is like really blocking off space around that. So like at least giving yourself the morning to do it or the afternoon to do it and working yeah. it that way. Next thing I actually was just thinking about myself that I didn't really know much about you and your relationship with training because obviously as a nutritionist you're going to have a different maybe approach to or view and outlook and different perspective basically yeah Yeah. um, I guess I wouldn't even say it's because I'm a nutritionist I'd say it's because I've got health conditions that I've got that kind of different outlook on oh yeah actually that's something um so I've got PCOS and IBS for anyone that doesn't know IBS is irritable bowel syndrome and PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome so Mm. Again, my own interest selfishly has kind of led me to my career because I just wanted to learn more about myself. Same. Um, and that's literally how I am, how I am where I am today. Yeah. Um, and my identity used to be training, like literally had an eating disorder, guys. Um, <laughs> and that lasted for a few years. I was into like fucking macros, if it fits your macros, like obsessed with the scales, obsessed with everything, you name it. Go listen to my podcast episode if you want to hear more about that. But um, I guess from now understanding hormones, from now understanding stress, inflammation, your nervous system and how all of that can be connected to ill health let's say I have absolutely released my identity as being like an athletic person so like just to give you the insight of contrast of how much I flow and adapt I've been sick lately and I haven't trained in like two and a half weeks that's because I was sick like literally one week fucking Bali belly in the week after vertigo like what the she's fuck? being rejected by Bali I'm being rejected by Bali literally it's a real thing it is everyone at home definitely thinks we've lost our minds because I talk about shit oh, that you. like you won't understand until you come to Bali Bali is rejecting her <laughs> <laughs> like it's time for you to move on bitch yeah like even even don't my friends me. no I'm not no I am sorry <laughs> actually it's sad no I'm too hungover and emotional for this <laughs> Let's not think about that. No tears, no tears. That's next week. Um, you know, even our friends that are not spiritual, like, they get it as well. Yeah. So it's not even just, like, a spiritual thing. It's, like, it's a Bali, yeah. mama Bali thing. Um, but, yeah, so I've been I've been stressed. I've had a lot of shit on my plate. And what I recognise is if... So I suppose if you've got too much stress, I always say to clients, if you think about it like a stress bucket, is my finger in the, in the shot? If you think about, like, a stress bucket, yes. okay, we've got a certain amount of stress that we can tolerate or cope with at any one moment in time okay Mm. so you want to leave a little bit of space at the top of your bucket so it's not already at capacity so then when shit hits the fan in life you're not overflowing it's not overspilling you're not having a mental breakdown you're not suffering with burnout you know whereas a lot of people don't realize that they're not actually looking at what's in your control like control the controllables um and that could look like your exercise that could look like your energy expenditure that could look like your food yeah calories nutrition uh, it could look like that toxic relationship in your life. It could look like a really bad working environment. It could look like you feeling unfulfilled, not getting out of bed on time, not going to bed on time, etc., etc. All these low-grade stressors can build up to be chronic stress, which is the worst oh, yeah. type of stress and can lead to a lot of health um, it conditions. Me. It me, yeah. Not anymore, it was but also it me. was me. Yeah, it was also me. And like you'll yeah. see in old pictures like 
very inflamed, a lot of water it's retention. Mad. Sure, you've even seen old photos of me, my face. You You're like so that. Different, yeah. I don't know if it's from like managing my stress better. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But like, yeah, my face was used to be. <laughs> I think which is fine, but it was just different. Chipmunk people, cheeks. A lot of people have said that about me as well. That like ch- chipmunk cheeks. Yeah, <laughs> I find them cute. Like you know, I still have them, just not as big. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would have had a lot of weight on me because I was obviously struggling with binge eating disorder as well. But yeah, I suppose when people don't understand about the stressors, um, they won't tune into their body. They'll just be like, no, I have to achieve. I have to go and train. I have to do mm-hmm. all of these things. I have to have a productive day. Mm-hmm. When at the end of the day, being busy is not productive. No. And if your body is in such a state of distress that it's manifesting in physical symptoms, you're not actually being productive at all. You're, you're being anti-productive. Like whatever it's a the disservice to yourself and everyone, especially if you're in a your client-based industry, to do that. Like that, I think I learned that the hard way, like not with this, like my new venture and everything that's happened since. But before that, like I've talked about it before, like I did five, six, maybe even seven years of cumulative chronic stress mm. build up. Like you said, low grade stressors that, you know, I was just basically disconnecting from myself. Like I wasn't my mind and body. Once again, that might sound airy fairy to people, but my mind and body were so disconnected because I was so living in my mind. And that's something I was reading about in The Power of Now. It's like, you really need to like, to be present and to be productive in the now or to do anything. You actually have to be present. You have mm-hmm. to be, mind, like your mind has to be here. And like, this is something I was even thinking about the other day is that I'm so clumsy and I'm convinced like when I'm eating, <laughs> This is why I say I'll never go on a dinner date with anyone. Uh, at I least for the cute first while. <laughs> it's yeah, but you think I'd that. Like, but I said that to a guy and he was like, Oh, and I was like, Yeah, but it's cute and he's, he's like, not the one for you in the band. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, you know the one it was as well, so no. Um but like what was I even saying? Clumsiness oh my God. disconnected from <laughs> Yeah, see I'm not being present. Um yeah, clumsiness. So when I was I was talking to my sister about it actually a while ago and we were saying how like when I'm eating say or like I'm walking and I trip over or when I'm eating and I drop food on my like white top it's a very typical day for me it kind of comes back back to the point of I think I'm living in the future I'm thinking about what I need to do and like that lack of mindfulness when you're eating is literally leading me to be like I'm thinking about the next probably spoon of food I'm gonna be eating so then I'm like so it's so important to actually if you want to do well in anything or if you want to live a happy life yeah live a happy (laughs) fulfilled life there's like the more you think about the future or like as you know people say live in the past like you're just holding yourself back from actually doing that Mm because we only do have the now and I know that sounds really cliche but like you get shit done when you think things that way like this morning when I woke up I had things I wanted to get done and as long as I showed up to everything that I wanted to do and tried my best, I was happy. Like I did a leg session in 40 degree, what did you say? 40 degree? 39 real feel. I can't feel. speak. 40 degree f- real feel. Like what the hell? It's hot. I suppose what people don't realise is that like, yeah, we can kind of just ignore our symptoms and stuff like that, but it is going to get to a point where like it comes to a head and it's like, don't ignore your body when it whispers because it will fucking scream at you. <laughs> it will literally scream at you. And what's really funny is like, or what's really sad really is that I find most women will only do something about it when it's like their hair or their skin or they get to the point of looking at their hormones because of fertility. Like don't wait until things are really fucking bad because like just to give an example, you shouldn't have painful periods. Like they're not a thing that you should mm-hmm. have to live with. You know, there are absolutely things you can put in place with nutrition, diet, same thing, <laughs> lifestyle and supplementation that can basically sort that and resolve that. Um, typically, like when I was uh, diagnosed with IBS, it was just like, okay, yeah, go on the pill and that's what's gonna fix you and you're just gonna have to deal with it and come back to us when you're pregnant. When I had IBS, it was like, yep, yeah, this is just a condition you have to live with and here's some laxatives, which were already making me fucking worse. And it's just like, that's all we can offer you. So people might not realize what they can actually do to help themselves. Yeah. And exercise obviously is one of those things that you can look at and you can pull back on but it's one of those things that we feel almost stuck in like more recently I'm seeing quite a trend with a lot of women who are coming to me for fertility issues which is amazing that's such a wholesome part of my Me- job meaningful as hell yeah, like you're helping like, people I get two pregnant clients had babies I was like oh my god 
Wow. Like, like bringing babies into the world single handedly. Yeah, literally. <laughs> you got to name them after you. We're not like, we're the health hunt. <laughs> That'd be cool. No, no. What I always say is it's a teamwork. It's the clients putting in the work. Like, oh, yeah. I'm directing them. I'm guiding them. I'm calling them out, giving them all the encouragement, all the tough love that they need. But at the end of the day, like they're the ones showing up for themselves, you know, so it's it's absolutely amazing. But you're helping them help themselves. Yeah. 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 No, we're, we're, we make a good team. Um, but a, a, a clan, a clan, a trend, a, clan. <laughs> a, a trend that together we have clients. two heads. We're one That's head. That's a new today. word. A clan, a trend. <laughs> a clan. I feel like it sounds like a disease. It sounds like Cletus. Clan. The clan. So the clan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we know the client trends. <laughs> the trends I have been seeing with clients. Oh. Um, it's really this kind of vicious cycle like, exercise. Okay, so what they can see is they are like dragging their heels to doing training mm. or else not going at all and beating themselves up all feeling nothing. so fucking guilty yeah mm. but it's this um what the medical system has kind of told them what they've been conditioned to believe is they need to lose weight to fix themselves so it's this back and forth between wanting to exercise but maybe not having the energy because of their condition or maybe because they're so distressed that they're mm. so overwhelmed they've got anxiety and it's this this kind of barrier that you need to do this exercise because you need to improve your conditions and there's nothing we can do to help you unless you lose weight and it's this like like your your the reasons for them exercising should be about intrinsic motivation feeling empowered feeling strong feeling like a bad bitch loving the feeling that energy gives you supporting your mental health like mm. much better reasons for exercise but it's almost like they're forced and when you're and forced train. to do anything, you don't want to do it. It's literal psychology. But they, they feel like, then the guilt as well. And this is the oh. thing that this way of thinking of like, you should, you have to, all these reasons, that needs to go. And I would have had that for years as well. It would have been like this guilt that I'm not exercising. And like resistance training is really important for PCOS. So like that is yeah. something that I need to incorporate. Like earlier on in the year, it's completely different to what I'm like right now. Um, and I'll get back to doing my training in no time. And I'm not in a rush. I'm making sure to listen to my body, which has been a fucking journey. Mm. But earlier on in the year, I was doing Mai Tai. I was doing Mai Tai once or twice a week. I was doing pole, I tried that as well. pole cool. dancing twice a week, which is fucking so empowering, girls, if yeah. you want to go give it a shot. And I was fitting in my resistance training. But what I was finding, my love for resistance training was slipping. So I was trying to incorporate this because I know it's good for me, but it was still becoming something that mm. I had to do. So it's just important to give yourself like breaks every so often, listen to your body. And listen to your body doesn't mean like always just sitting on the couch and not doing yeah. anything. It means like figuring out That's what listening to your doing. mind. Yeah, it is, it hmm. is. But, but you may have to do some work with your mind and play mind games with yourself. So I always say to clients is lower your expectations. If you're trying to go to the gym, yeah. And you're trying to find, or you're, you're, you're finding that, you know, you don't want to go and do a 40 minute session or you don't want to go and do all these kind of things you've got planned do out. do 20 minutes. Literally, lower, minutes. lower that expectation right down. Just yeah. give yourself the expectation or make a promise. You'll go in there and you'll walk on the treadmill yeah. for 10 minutes or you'll go in there and you'll do 10 squats. You and then afterwards, you'll come out of it and you'll be like, okay, well, at least I did that one thing. Mm. Or what will usually happen is you actually do the rest of the session and all is good again. Because <laughs> it is like, I know we say not to rely on motivation, but then the day, like, it can be really challenging, especially in the colder winter months in Ireland, which is something that I think, you know, we don't experience over in Bali or in Sydney for you. And it can be kind of hard to relate back, even though it's very, like, I have strong memories of my motivation levels, even just last Christmas when I was at, like, my rock bottom mental health wise like awful like I always went to the gym I never really had many periods in my life where I didn't go like it was always like my constant and when that started not being like even something I wanted to do motivation wise like probably a little bit of depression to be honest I didn't go at all it was like the all or nothing thing and I that's what I try to help my clients do as well is to kind of iron out that all or nothing mindset. Perfectionism is one of them. Being yeah. an achiever is one of them. Self-sabotage is one of them. Mm -hmm. But also just feeling un overwhelmed and not understanding that you don't have to do all of the things all of the time. And that would be something that I really work on is to try and do the baby steps. Yeah. And that is release. That is becoming more feminine. That is becoming less of a perfectionist. Mm. And you being like, okay, maybe I'm just going to try 
do a small piece of work where your brain might be like, what's the fucking point? There is no point, so you better go do the big thing that you need to be doing or nothing at all. So it's like really playing those tricks back with your yeah. mind so that you can actually move towards um, the, the process of like the little things that you do day by day, moment by moment. And I really think that mindfulness helps with that as well. Oh yeah, big time. If you bring mindfulness yeah. into your life, you can actually appreciate like what you're saying, the present moment, you know? Yeah. Like even today, obviously, as I said, I went out last night, which was very spontaneous of me. We love this version of Maeve. Yeah. <laughs> God, wouldn't be unheard of in the past. But, <laughs> like, I was even just thinking to myself, like, I didn't experience guilt when I was making that decision to go out. And this morning, woke up, got my shit together, didn't feel anxiety about it because I trust in myself that I'm going to show up for myself today. So, like, I made sure that I got my workout in because I know it helps me feel productive and, like, sets the tone for my day. Even if I get nothing else done, at least I moved my body, I improved some aspect of my health got my food in after like used to in the past when I was hung over say or stressed or I felt like I was running out of time and that I wanted to get all my my shit done basically my nutrition my water would just go out the window mm -hmm. I was like that's not a priority and it's like now I know that showing up for me every day is just doing the basics and as long as I do that anything extra is just like a bonus mm. and it just even at the end of every day then I'll feel like content like at least I've covered the basics I've fed myself today I've took care of myself that's all you need to do yeah like everything else will on the better days then you'll have that energy and headspace because today my head is gone mm. like <laughs> it's fine I'm doing creative work today so amazing, it's fine sweetie. I'm doing amazing but like I can't even see straight right now that's kind of <laughs> the glassy eye hangover effect <laughs> not good not good but I'm gonna be fine I'm gonna be fine so this is actually my last episode for this season. I'm going to go with six episodes for the first season purely because we're coming up to Christmas time and I'm actually going to take some inspo from Orla and <laughs> just have loads lined up for you guys for next year. And if you guys have anything you want me to chat about or want me to ask anyone on to have chats with, like the lovely Orla, I hope you enjoyed the first season. It's been a blast. I can't believe I have a podcast still, to be honest. <laughs> like, I was even just thinking this morning, I was doing my weekly newsletter and it's the same week that I started my podcast and it's like week six or seven. And I was like, yeah. like how long have I been in Bali for? Mad. And we're staying here indefinitely. So that's fun. But yeah, until next season, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.